Hello, everybody. Dan Tomaszewski here with Everything MSP. Hope you're all doing well. It's uh, it's a great day here. We're here to talk about DMARC and a lot of changes that are coming up. And with that being said, I, I have with me Mike Anderson, the, the global channel manager and uh, with uh, with Easy DMARC. How are you doing today? We're doing great, man. Uh, you know how it is living the dream. Lots of lots of things going on right now. Yeah, February one's a big date uh, coming up here, right? Yeah, so uh, I'm sure all of your your viewers and listeners are probably familiar, uh, you know, if, uh, with the DMARC policies uh, that were uh, for a long time uh, optional. Now all of the big sending uh, providers, uh, Google, Yahoo, AOL, um, Apple, uh, and you know, pretty much everybody you can think of has now signaled those. Uh, Optional DMARC policies will now be mandatory coming up after February 1st. Uh, we've seen some things even from Microsoft signaling that they're uh, really getting focused on that. Uh, so pretty much the entire world's sending apparatus for email will be requiring uh, DMARC policies to be in place, you know, sometime uh, right after February, the 1st of February. So uh, for MSPs, this is a, uh, you know, it can be a scary time or an exciting time, but uh, <laughs> either way, it's time to get on board. Yeah, and I mean, it's not necessarily just a security aspect. It's also comes down to deliverability for, you know, your your MSP clients, right? Yeah, so that that's the number one thing. You know, it was originally invented to prevent spoofing, and everybody should think security job one. That of course that goes yeah. saying. But now, uh, with the penalties being put in place, just general communication, email marketing, invoicing, you know, large sends, uh, getting through, just having your email being delivered now with so many people having, uh, you know, filters on on the receiving end for DMARC compatibility, you, you, sure. you have to be prepared uh, to move forward. Yeah, and I think, too, um you know, when you when you take a look at this overall, um, you know, we as MSPs, there's a responsibility that we have to help secure our clients, um, but also just that aspect of, you know, we are, um, you know, we, we're helping them through the use of technology to help drive their business forward. And, um, you know, I mean, we, we got to, like I've talked about a lot, we got to move away from the blinky light conversations to talk about the real business aspects of it. And this truly has um, a, a lot of business implications if it's not addressed. Yeah, the, the complexities of deliverability, you know, all these big email sending providers have their algorithm. You know, you can't have too many, um, you know, um, misaligned emails. You can't have too many bounces, you know, bad emails. So you always have to be cleaning up your email roles. Uh, you have to have a good domain score, sender reputation, uh, have your DMARC policies in place because deliverability, which means getting your message in front of the intended user, is now the standard. That's the holy grail of what people need. And sure. you know, these MSPs are now really seeing that uh, their customers are calling them saying, you know, we're taking a look at this stuff and our deliverability has just descended uh, mm -hmm. to, to rates that really aren't acceptable uh, what is this DMARC all about? And so it's really opened the door. Yeah, and I think too, um, you know, the last thing that as an MSP you want to have happen is that a third party comes in, um, whether it be some, you know, a, a marketing uh, firm or someone else telling you that, you know, you've overlooked something, right? You know, we we, we never want that to happen, right? Yeah, and we're hearing those stories all the time, uh, you know, XYZ company added a new sending source and the, they reviewed their settings and wondered why they didn't have DMARC in place. So right. what does the customer naturally do? Goes to the MSP and is like, that, you know, why didn't you have this in place? And so uh, we've seen some, some firms being caught off a little off guard. Uh, but, you know, again, the word's starting to get out uh, that that's no longer acceptable. So, yeah, you know, yeah. you really, you know, look like that that trusted advisor getting in front of these conversations now. And again, you know, no matter what your customer believes, they're going to have to go from, you know, what was optional to what is mandatory, you know, so they got to get from here to here, no matter what they know or believe or have heard. So right. now it's time for you to exert that 
that, uh, you know, trusted advisor status and say, hey, man, we got to get you from here to here uh, before you start suffering some 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 performance issues. You know, of course, um, you know, MSPs have both regular recurring clients, but there's then you, you've got the break fix out there as well. But, you know, when you're talking about optional versus required, you know, let's just talk specifically about managed clients. Um, I think it's of great value that this just gets added to the stack that, you know, Mr. Client, we're going to take care of this for you. We're going to, you know, put this in place. And um, it, it's just all part of the package. Because uh, why would you want to make this an optional thing? Why would you want to go to them and say, do you want this or don't you want this? Because first and foremost, they're not going to understand it. Um, but secondly, I mean, it needs to be put in place. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, coming up within the next couple of months, once they go from the warnings, which they've mentioned that the sending providers, all the big ones have said, hey, we're going to start warning people after February 1st, you know, for a couple of months that you're not in compliance. And then afterwards, they're going to flip on that reject policy, really starting to reject uh, emails uh, from 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 the sender. And so your customer really doesn't have a choice uh, again you know, this, this is not something that's optional. That's what makes this such a, a massive boon to the business uh, in terms of revenue and, and yeah. services, however you choose to monetize it. Um, but this has to be added to the stack based on, you know, things that are out of our control, right? That, you know, we're using other people's sending systems. They require this. It used to be here. Now it's here in terms of requirement. So you got to get there to use their systems. And so, uh, there's just really no option moving forward. So, you know, when we take a look at this, you know, there's obviously a lot of settings that need to be changed when it comes to, you know, DNS uh, records. Um, you know, why can't I just go in and make the changes, put the changes in place and then walk away? Do I need to have something in place that's ongoing? Yeah. So, you know, putting the, the the records in place, you know, really doesn't give you any oversight and visibility and audit capability of exactly what's going on. You know, with, okay. a, with a domain, you know, you know, you have a sending source and maybe you put some records in there. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're not. With the with the sending providers, they will provide reports, but they come in XML format. Right. Mm -hmm. So real easy to read. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're Neo from the Matrix. Remember in the first movie at the end when he <laughs> got shot and he got up and he was looking down the hallway and he was reading yeah. it and turning it into a picture. Unless you're Neo from the Matrix and can turn XML code into a picture, that's completely right. worthless. So our yeah. platform like ours and others will give you the picture of what's going on. Okay. And you know, obviously, um, you know beyond just sending out invoices to clients, um, you know, more and more of our clients are, you know, doing digital marketing, obviously. I mean, it's not a, a brand new thing, but they're wanting to ensure that the efforts they're putting in place are going to work, right? Because the last thing you want to do is send out, you know, 10, 20,000 emails. So, you know, if you've got a large, uh, you know, opted in list of followers, um, last thing you want to do is have 50% of them or more all ending up in junk mail or, or just being rejected period. Yeah. And it's a cascading effect. So the more you get rejected, the more your score goes down, which means the more you get rejected. And so it's, it's kind of a, a, a spiraling cycle downwards until you get these uh, protocols aligned and get them fixed, clean up your email rolls, a number of things to start going back up with your algorithms and your scores, right? And so you really have to have visibility, command and control of these domains, how they're aligned, uh, all the sending sources, right? And use a, you know, an analytics platform like ours to be able to have that visibility into those factors to, to really make sure that you have everything aligned uh, to keep your emails, you know, flowing smoothly. Gotcha. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit more about, uh, easy DMARC, uh, and your organization. Can you give us some background, um, about the company overall? Yeah, the uh, company has been around for about eight years, uh, explosive growth. Uh, we've got, um, 
you know, an enterprise side, some of the biggest companies, biggest governments, biggest names you've ever heard of in the world uh, on our platform. Uh, we have, you know, 600 MSPs uh, on our platform. We'll probably sign up double that this year. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, we're worldwide people all over the, uh, the globe, people in, in the U.S., in Poland, uh, Amsterdam, London, uh Yerevan, Armenia, you know, and so uh, we really follow the sun for a, a lot of our modeling uh, and, you know, a global firm, uh, you know, serving a, a global community. Very cool. Um, so when you take a look at the the interface, um, you know, so obviously, you know, MSPs are managing multiple clients. Um, you know, how how is that set up? Is it you know, more client by client, or is it a multi-tenant type of scenario? What does that look like? Yeah, so the platform is definitely uh, MSP friendly, multi-tenant, uh, where you can add your companies in there and then segment domains underneath their companies. So you can quickly, you know, company X may have five domains. You can click on them, just look at their five domains. You know, and this is really helpful when you're managing hundreds and hundreds of do domains. You don't have to scan through all hundred. You can just go right to the company, right to their specific domains. You can add users specifically to their domain or domain groups, really control the flow of information. Uh, very MSP friendly, service provider friendly. And we intentionally develop, uh, are developing the platform in that model. Uh, we recently rolled out uh, APIs for Corona, uh, Acronis. Uh, APIs are in development currently for ConnectWise, uh, Pax8, uh, as well as some open APIs. So we're continuing to evolve that service provider model. We're doing some really interesting things with uh, uh, automated DNS integration uh, that, you, that you were talking about, putting the DNS records. Some of that's going to be an automated flow coming up in the future. Uh, so the platform's really built to... Uh, serve the MSP uh, model. Okay. And so, uh, you know, when we take a look at this for MSPs, is something that they can make some money off of? Absolutely. So we give you the intelligence to, you know, the ease of use, putting in the, the, the information, looking at it, you're going to see reports, you're going to see, you know, where you're compliant, where you're non-compliant or misaligned, be able to drill down on those sections. And however you monetize services in the business, you'll see all of those sources that are misaligned, right? So you can attach hours to those, uh, sell those hours, monetize the, the, the break fix or the service alignment uh, of the DMARC, and then manage and monitoring an ongoing, uh, you know, certainly very profitable model in terms of, you know, what our price is to the MSP and, and what they can charge to the market. And, you know, just... If you could, I, I know obviously everything um, ha has an impact as far as like how many domains are under management. Um, can you give me some some basic idea of costs? Yeah, so our MSP program starts out at ten dollars per sending domain per month. It is mm -hmm. a is a minimum of ten domains to start, so it's a hundred dollars a month to start. Not expensive in our program no. month to month. So we don't lock you into these long term agreements like some. Okay. Other right? And then we really help you launch with a comprehensive implementation strategy. Uh, we give you videos, installation guides, uh, some other assistance when you're first trialing the platform so that you really catch on, understand how to use it, how to monetize, uh, you know, you, you know, your services in the business and really understand. Uh, and then when you convert, we're going to give you you know, engineering training and ongoing support so that you you have a completely good grasp on how to solve for DMARC. Then once you become a customer, we tie that into a marketing and enablement and sales enablement platform that will help you go out and monetize your services, carry the message to the market, right? MSPs have enough to focus on with their technology mm -hmm. and this and that, uh, creating new forms of, of content to market um, DMARC services, We've got all that taken care of, uh, hundreds and hundreds of documents, a big repository, nice. uh, you know, marketing resources and sales resources that are attached to each individual account uh, for the MSP to use. That's excellent. Um, so as we uh, as we wrap things up here for any of our um, our audience that want to learn more about EZD Mark, 
Um, what, where should they go? Who should they reach out to, to, uh, find out more information? Yeah. So they can reach out to me directly, Mike at easydmark.us, and then certainly go to our website, which is www.easydmark.com. Uh, you can look under the, uh, the pricing page. There's an MSP section. You can schedule directly from there. You can get information, schedule a meeting, uh, demo, uh, however you'd like to get, to get in touch with us, but we've got multiple forms uh, of, uh, you, you know, ways to bring people in. Uh, we'll, we'll show you a demo, get you on a trial, get you launched and off, off you go. Excellent. And the clock is ticking, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> say to say it's busy right now. That's, that's an understatement. Uh, people, <laughs> people call and saying, I can't get on your calendar for a while. I'm like, yeah, take whatever yeah. you can. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Take that first spot, even if it's a few days away. So, um, right, uh, yeah, it's 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 a real big time right now. Excellent. All right, Mike, I I really appreciate your time and expertise. Uh, for all of our audience out there, thank you for listening. Uh, take a look at Easy D Mark to learn more about how you can not only provide uh, great value in protecting your clients, but also make a little bit of money uh, along the way. So, Mike, again, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.